The next transformations that we're going to perform on sine and cosine are phase shifts. Phase shifts are nothing more than another way of saying we're going to transform it horizontally. And our, our transformation is a horizontal translation. And our translations are slides. We're going to slide them left or right. So this is our movement left and right. If I connect this back to our prior learning, what we've had before is we've had y equals and we have some function f at x. If we take a look at what happens to our function, we put f at x plus c, then it's going to move it horizontally either left or right. If c is greater than zero, or if c is positive, then we're looking at, let me simplify it even further. Let's make a very concrete example. f at x plus 2, plus 2, it's counterintuitive, it's actually going to slide our graph left two units. If we had the original function in, it was set y equals f at x minus 2, then the counterintuitive idea on this means it's going to move it two units to the right. To the right two units. So coming back to our prior information, that's what we did. The same thing is going to hold true for these phase shifts. Now, in order to get this whole picture kind of in line, I want to look at the study tip. This is the first little deviation I'm going to have from the textbook on kind of what I prefer to do. It doesn't mean that this is the only way. The textbook is giving you the form. You can see that these two forms that the textbook is using, and then they give you an alternative form. This alternative form is the one that I like to use. Now, in their version that they kind of show you, it's A, sine, and then they have parentheses B, X, plus C, and plus D. We've already investigated what A does. A is your vertical stretch, it's the amplitude. We have already looked at what B does. B is your period change, it's your horizontal stretch or shrink. Now we're working on the phase shift part, C, and that's going to move it left and right horizontally. And in the next part, we're going to see what D does, and this is your vertical stretch, or vertical translations, which is going to move it up and down. So we're not worrying about that right now, at least for the moment. That's coming later. If you take this equation, Y equals A sine, and if you factor out the B, you factor out a B means you're dividing it by B. So this BX plus C, anytime you factor out, I'm factoring out a B, means you're dividing by B, and you'll be left with X plus C over B. And then, of course, you can put the D on there if that's, uh, if you're going to consider vertical translations. Now, this is the form that I feel most comfortable in. This is the form that kind of goes along with all the other transformations that we learned all the way back to Unit 1. So this is the one I'm going to be kind of advocating for and trying to get you to use. But this B is still controlling the period. It's still multiplied times X. So that's the deal that's going to tell you that it's a horizontal stretch and shrink. This value in here, if it is X plus C over B, then it's going to move it to the left. If it is X minus C over B, then it's going to move it to the right. It's going to be counterintuitive. So my first goal is to transform all my equations into a form that's going to look like this. Now sine can be replaced with cosine or any trig function. So here's what I'm looking at. We've got y equals the cosine of, first thing I prefer is to see this as 1 half times x plus pi fourth. Just rewrite it in an equivalent form. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I get this x to be a coefficient of 1. Now in order to get it in the correct form, I always have to have a coefficient of 1 in front of the x. So that's going to precipitate us factoring out a 1 half. So the 1 half is factored out. If I factor out a half, then I am going to be left with the next there. And just to give you a complete idea of this, whenever you factor, factoring means that we're going to be dividing by a half. If you're dividing by a half, you're literally multiplying by 2. So this is getting multiplied by 2, and this is getting multiplied by 2. So factoring a half is the same thing as dividing by a half, but dividing by a half is multiplying by 2. The 2's will cancel. I have x. Dividing by a half is the same thing as multiplying by 2, so we'll have pi halves. So it'll be plus pi halves. So that's just the factory principle that we have to get through. Now the next thing is to go ahead and try to graph this function. So let me just kind of go through this without any other considerations with the period or the phase shift. Typically a cosine curve starts at 1, finishes at a negative, or goes down as low as a negative 1. Cosine curve start at a maximum, and then 2 pi units later is back at a maximum. So I'm going to go pi halves, then 
pi, then 3 pi halves, then 2 pi. So we'd be at the maximum. Halfway in between, we'd be at its minimum. Halfway in between, we'd be at 0. So this is what our apparent function cosine of x is. Now we've got to do a couple of transformations to it. First thing I want to do is I want to take care of this phase shift. The phase shift is this horizontal transformation. So since it's x plus pi halves, it's going to move it left pi halves units. So that means all of these points are going to get shifted pi halves units to the left. So every one of these points, I'm going to x them out now because those aren't the ones that we want, are going to be moved pi halves units to the left. So this point becomes here. This point gets shifted. This point shifted. Shift over. Shift over. So now what we have is our graph that would be shifted pi halves units to the left. Well, that we find too, but the problem with that is we also have a period change. Okay, so now we've got to make sure that in this, since we take a half, what does a half do to our period? Well, the analogy that I've given you is half takes the speed of the Ferris wheel and slows it down by a factor of a half, which means your period is going to have to grow by a factor of two. Or if you want to use their formula, you can always calculate the period by taking two pi divided by b, which is a half. And again, you're going to do a lot of these complex fractions, dividing by a half, it's the same thing as multiplying by 2, and the period should be 4 pi. Okay, so starting to get the picture that this period is not long enough anymore, that when we start here at negative pi halves, we have to finish 4 pi units later. So what we got to do is we got to come down here and factor in 4 pi. So let me finish my units on the bottom here. So if this is 2, then we have 5 pi halves next, 2 pi, 5 pi halves, so I'll double check myself, then we have 3 pi, and then that is 5, 6, 7 pi halves, and then 8 pi, which would be 4 pi. Now our period is 4 pi units long, so if I started negative pi halves and I go 4 pi units long, it would be at 7 pi halves, I'd have to be back at a positive 1. Halfway in between that, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units. Go to the fourth unit, 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got to be at its lowest point. And then halfway in between, 1, 2, we need to be at its 0. And halfway in between our max and minimum, 2 units, we have to be at its 0 again. So this is what the finished product of this graph is going to look like with all the details involved. And that's what our parent function looks like in black compared to our um, new change transform equation. So, all right, so how do I do this without going through all of those steps? And here's what I'm going to do. I'll show you the, the way I facilitate all these every time. This is negative pi halves. This is pi halves. 3 pi or pi. Get my labels in here again. Pi, 3 pi halves, and we have 2 pi, 5 pi halves, and then we have um, 3 pi, 7 pi halves, and then 4 pi. First thing I do whenever I graph these, I think about what kind of function it is. It's a cosine function, so I know it's going to start at a maximum. Next thing I think about is the phase shift. The phase shift is going to push our graph, our first point over here, to a negative pi halves. Then I go right to the period and say, what's the period going to be? The period, the half we said is going to be 4 pi. So I sh phase shift my first point over, pi halves units. Then I figure out the 4 pi is going to put me down here at 7 pi halves for the length of the period. And then I start cutting that in half. Half of that is going to be at 3 pi halves. Half of that is going to be at pi halves. And half in between those is 5 pi halves. So this is how I would graph that function a lot quicker than what I did before. So there we go. There's our first one. Let me look at another example with you. Second example says y equals 3 sine of 2x minus pi thirds. Again, what I want to do is I want to get it in the right version or form for me to work with, and that means I need to have that coefficient to be a 1. So y equals 3 sine. I'm going to factor out the 2, and it's going to be x minus. Now, anytime I'm factoring out a 2, I'm dividing by 2, so I'm going to have pi 6. So this is the equation that we have to graph. We have an amplitude that's going to be affecting it. We have a period change that's going to be affecting it. And we're going to have a phase shift that's going to be affecting it.
Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to be thinking about how the phase shift is going to affect my graph. This, since it's a negative pi 6, it's going to shove this entire graph pi 6 units to the right. So our graph is going to start at pi 6. So what normally starts here for a sine curve is now going to be pushed over here. So my starting point for my graph is pi 6. Okay, now I'm going to take a look and see what the period does to it. The period is 2, which means we double the speed of our Ferris wheel. If we double the speed, we take half the period length, so the period should be equal to pi. Again, run your 2 pi divided by b, and you get pi. So we have a period length of pi, so I want to go out pi units. So I'm going to go in pi 6, so this is going to be 2 pi 6, which is pi thirds. It'll be 3 pi 6, which would be pi halves. It'll be 4 pi 6, which would be 2 pi thirds. Then it'll be 5 pi 6, and then it'll be pi, 6, 6 pi, and then it's going to go to 7 pi 6. Now, if I take pi 6 and I add on a pi, which is 6 pi 6, I'm up to 7 pi 6, which would be one period for this graph. So I'm going to start at pi 6. We're going to finish at 7 pi 6, which is a period of pi. Halfway in the middle, 1, 2, 3 units. Or at 2 pi thirds, we should be back to 0 for a sine curve. Halfway between these, 1, 2, we've got 1, 2, 3. So halfway in between, so halfway between pi thirds and pi halves is our maximum point, and we want to be up to, and now is when I'm going to consider my amplitude. We're going to go as high as a positive 3, and we're going to go as low as a negative 3, so 1.5 units down, negative 3. So here's what our graph looks like, considering the amplitude change, the period change, and the phase shift. So we have a period of pi, we have a phase shift of negative, uh, or of a positive pi 6, and we have an amplitude of 3. And it's always good to connect these things back to your, your y-axis. So what I would do is from here, we've got to get to our lowest point in a unit and a half. So one and a half units, we should be at the lowest point, and it'll be coming down in here. So um, there you have it. That's kind of how I think through phase shifts.